was, I, I actually asked for it last night because I got a very, very disturbing phone call from a very good friend who's deep inside the political system. And, and it, it literally asked my wife, I was eating supper and I almost threw up. It was very, very disturbing. And the things that the trajectory we are on here, it just, um, it just will stop me dead. And so this is the reason I'm here today is because we're in a lot of trouble if we don't stand up. So the question is, is are we in a crisis with our hospitals right now? I worked, um, what day is it? I have no idea when I worked last. I worked every night this week almost. And so uh, my last shift um, was very slow. Um, there's been slow and quick days, but it's definitely slowed down. If you look at, so I got um, one of my friends to send me the numbers from the U of A last night. And, and um, the day before our lockdown, I texted one of my political friends and I said, oh, we must be heading in a lockdown because the numbers are starting to droop. As soon as they droop, they put us in a lockdown, so it looks like the lockdown fixed everything. And they've done this every time, and I know because I see the numbers. And so you know that if you're into one and a half days or two days of a droop, we're going to have a lockdown because if it gets better, then of course it fixed it. So I looked and the U of A numbers had definitely, the three days they've been trending down. Um, and I, my last shift, I had zero patients for about three hours. And so I chit-chatted, seems it was probably my last day. So, um, I, you know, I haven't looked. I, I, don't, I, I don't go on social media. I don't listen to the news. I don't watch television. I don't do any of that nonsense. Um, and I don't look at the HS data because it has absolutely zero effect on who I'm going to see next. I'm going to treat the next person that texts me or comes into my department, and I really don't care how many were there before them. And no, I've never had a problem. The only reason I can't get to see people in my department, and I have to be careful what I say, I'm glad there is a lawyer here. So just hit me if I say something I shouldn't. <laughs> so about six years ago, we had a government come in and uh, about two years into their mandate, they started cutting back nurse positions um, in our department. And if you remember, it hit the Red Air Advocate, and there was a big story of how the world was falling apart. And actually, I was the head of the department at the time, so I wrote a little op-ed or whatever, and they uh, messed it all up and printed what they wanted. So we, as a department, wrote a letter back, and they just thought, that was last week, we're not really interested anymore, so they never printed their actual true story. And we, were, we had to redirect people out of the hospital to other little hospitals, and we're the, we're the intake hospital for Central Zone. You, you can't do that. You can't send a heart attack to a home. They don't, they don't present them to us. But this is what we were doing, and it's because we had no staff. So as I say, I got 55 positions, 55 spots in that department. Every night at 11.30, we close 17 of them because we don't have enough money staff or whatever it is. And then um, if I have 20 admitted patients because I can't get them out of my department in the hospital because the hospital is full, and the hospital is full because I can't get them out of the hospital because I can't send them anywhere because we have no support in, at home. So they end up in the hospital for days or years and then they back up into my department. So if I have 20 admitted patients, I have 55 to start with, I take 17 away, I'm at 38, I think, right? And I take 20 out of that, I'm now down to 18 beds. It takes me five hours to run through the average patient. You do the math, I have four doctors standing there, I can see three patients an hour times four doctors. I can see that in an hour, but I can't, because they take five hours to run. So that's why you get a five hour wait, because I have nowhere to see you. So it has nothing to do with COVID, it's been going on for six years, and it was created. And we have a crisis. And we have a crisis because we have no staff, because our staff quit because they're burned out. They're not burned out from COVID. But I had a staff come up to me last night and was working with me since I got there as a resident in 2000 and forever. And she's been there for 30 years. She quit last night. She was crying. She's, she's a very senior nurse. And she says, I'm packing up my locker tonight. I'm not telling anybody. And I'm done. She said, one of your colleagues called me a waste of skin because I'm not vaccinated. So this is somebody who worked there for 18 months, unvaccinated, not, not afraid, unvaccinated, front lines, who walked out of there last night. That was my last night too, probably last night. And because my colleagues called her a waste of skin because she wouldn't get vaccinated. Well, that's the crisis we have. I got an email text last night from a person who's in the know. And they said that 425 ICU and critical care staff have quit over whatever I said, yeah, I know they have. I have lost at least 30 over in my department. And I can tell you that, that they're not quitting because COVID's burning them out. They're burning them for that. The crisis that is being created is burning on our staff. And this is a mess. 
but we have capacity to deal with what we have. We have 8,000 beds in Alberta. We've got 900 COVID patients. I don't know what our, our ICU last night was 212 or something like that. And I know exactly how many uh, ICU beds we have. I also know that we can double capacity to every ICU in Alberta, like quickly. So, so if you take, we have 897 ICU beds in Alberta, or we did actually before this started. It's funny, we got less today, which is really strange. I didn't know we'd do that in the pandemic. But, so we have 897, some of them pick you and NICU, and I understand we're not putting, putting a seven year old patient in a pick you or NICU department, so take out some of them. But I also know that since 2009, we've had a whole bunch of ventilators kick around because we thought everybody was gonna die that time, and we still have them. And I know how to run them, and all of the nurses in my department know how to run them, and RTs obviously know how to run them. So everybody in my hospital knows how to run a ventilator, but nobody knows where they are. And so we have 2,500 ventilators and have 12, 212 or 250 COVID patients. That's a lot, there's no argument. This is something we have to deal with, but we can do it. So I'm not sure what's going on, I really don't. But we treat the patients that come into us. And, and um, some of this crisis is, anyway, it, it, I don't understand.